السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Ahmed Hijazi from Mesikat Solutions Today inshallah we will make a demonstration for uh, Kettle uh, Team Heat Exchanger Time And in this demonstration we will uh, generate uh, the 3D model of this equipment uh, We will divide the demonstration to uh, three parts The first part will include the 3D modeling of this equipment uh, We will open a new project and uh, name our project after that, select the location of this project, select the module type, which is a heat exchanger. After that, click Finish. SEG will start generating the project files. We will select the equipment and rename it. After that, from the setting, we will open the equipment setting and uh, modify the uh, visual setting and the other data. And from the app setting, we will select parent preview, child preview, and the uh, size of uh, nozzle shall be in then instead of NBS. Now we will add an elliptical head, uh, define the inside diameter, the uh, thickness and straight flange minimum thickness after forming and click save. Now we will add another part which is CAN1 and from CAN1 we will shell, select shell type, define the inside diameter, define the thickness, the longitudinal building line orientation and the length of this uh, shell. Now we will add a design flange for heat exchanger. We will select the second type which is integral weld neck with group face, define the inside diameter of this flange the thickness of the end or, uh, and the neck thickness the neck length after that we will define the outside diameter of the flange the flange thickness the raised face thickness the raised face outside diameter the bolt circle diameter and the bolt diameter after that number of bolts we will click save now we will start creating the assembly now that's the ellipsoidal head we can after that the uh, flange uh, this is the design flange. Now we will add a gasket with a pass partition. Select two passes. After that, we will define the inside diameter, define the thickness, and define the width of this gasket. Define the pass partition thickness. Let's add the tube sheet. From the tube sheet, we will select the first type, which is uh, uh, gasketed from two sides. Define the inside diameter, the raised face from two sides, the thickness of the raised face the thickness of uh, the uh, tube sheet, select the number of pass partitions, define the pass partition width and the fillet. Now let's click save and generate the 3D model for the gasket and the tube sheet. Uh, after creating that we will add uh, the whole pattern. From here we will define the dimensions of the tube pattern like inside diameter, tube outside diameter, tube clearance, Select number of pass partitions and the vertical and horizontal pass line define the bar, uh, tie rod diameter. Select the uh, whole uh, definition on the tube sheet for the tube. Uh, after that, select the tube pattern. Okay, now we have the uh, tube pattern. We will remove this tube and convert this one to a tie rod and another tie rod at the bottom of the same location of the first uh, tube. Click save. Let's add another tie rod, define the location, and uh, in, uh, in Y and X. Let's add another two passes on the uh, two, uh, pass partition, define the Y to be at zero, and the uh, X to be uh, 320, with a negative and positive value to add tie rods. Now we saved the information. Now let's add a baffle support baffle let's select end baffle define the inside diameter of the shell define the clearance no cut in uh, on uh, the middle define the spacing and the location define the vent hole and number of baffles now let's add a tube select uh, after creating it let's select bend the tube not a straight tube okay now let's add a tie rod let's define the lens Thread length at the start, not offset. Thread at the end. Tie rod penetration, diameter of the tie rod. Now let's create the 3D model for those parts, baffles, tube, and tie rod. Now let's, after creating the 3D model of those parts, let's create the uh, pattern for them. Let's select the tube sheet and tube sheet holding and click on start. Holding. Now as you will start creating the uh, tube pattern holding and define the uh, uh, pattern of four tubes. 
After that, we will, will make a cut uh, on the baffles and make a pattern for the tie rods. Okay, now we will open the assembly of the baffle. As you can figure, some uh, tubes need to be updated. Just double click on it and double click on the uh, sketch pattern. Just double click on it and click save, not more. It will be updated. This issue related to Autodesk Inventor itself. Now we will uh, make a constraint for the uh, UCSs of those tubes. Automatically, it's, uh, it will not take more than 13, uh, 30 seconds. Let's make the, uh, the uh, UCS constraint. By that way, select the tube UCS and make a simply with the UCS of the final assembly of tubes. Now we will save the tubes simply. OK. Now let's add uh, as a sliding bar and select the double type, which is double radial. Define the inside diameter, define the thickness, the clearance, and the lens. Define the height, location, orientation, and uh, in between angle, which is the contact angle between the double radial uh, sliding bar. Click on assembly to start creating the sliding bar simply. Now it's okay. Let's add the other bars. Let's add a gasket after that you cheat. Define the inside diameter, thickness and a gasket width. Define another flange and we will make it looks like F1 during a selection. Let's add another can which is can one and make it looks like can one and define the uh, the lens change. Uh, the longitudinal welding line orientation and the lens. Let's add an uh, eccentric cone. So from here, let's select the type to be eccentric, define the inside diameter, the thickness is 28, uh, longitudinal welding line orientation, the lens and the other uh, diameter on the other side. Let's add another can, can 3, select the shell type, define the inside diameter, thickness, longitudinal welding line orientation, the lens, and click save. Let's add the last main bar, which is the right head. And let's select ellipsoidal head with crown and the knuckle radius. And from here, define the inside diameter, the thickness, and the straight flange minimum thickness after forming. Now let's uh, make a quick check for the uh, crown and the knuckle radius calculation. OK, that's the uh, crown radius. And that's the knuckle radius. OK, let's run the assembly. Here we have the gasket, the other flange, the shell, the eccentric cone, the main shell, and the last head. Now you can figure that the head uh, con uh, convex direction is, uh, is not correct, so we will flip it and run the assembly again to flip the head direction. OK. After that, we will uh, select the cone and add the saddle on the eccentric cone. From here, let's define the height, define the thickness, and for the wheel plate, define the contact angle, define the width of the wheel plate, define the thickness. Okay, and from here, let's define the uh, top width of the saddle, and the bottom width, and the mid rib. And from here, let's define the base plate length, base plate width, thickness, and the whole diameter, the whole offset from the short edge whole offset from long edge, add another row, define the location and click save. Now let's add another saddle for the main shell. Okay, select the saddle. From here, select the contact angle, define the whip width, the base blade length, base blade width, thickness, whole diameter, offset from long and short edge, add another row, Define the location, define the top width of the saddle, bottom width of the saddle, and mid row. And now let's create the assembly. Now we can figure the parts are created uh, automatically and assembled automatically. That's for the first saddle on the eccentric cone.
the second saddle. Now let's add a lifting lug for the ponnet. Here define the bottom width and uh, all dimension of this uh, lifting lug according to the image on the right hand side. Define the location, orientation, click save. Let's add another lifting lug and we will make it looks like this other lifting lug. But we will change the location and uh, only the orientation. Click save. Select can three and add a lifting lug type two. Define all dimension. Add a wheel plate. Define the wheel plate dimensions. Define the location and the orientation. Let's add another lifting lug and make it looks like lug three. Change the orientation and click simply. Now you can figure that the wheel plate uh, width is uh, or the length is not. Uh, need to be increased a little bit. So after finishing the assembly, we will come back to SVG and modify the wheel plate width for lug one and lug two. So we will increase the width, uh, the length. And here, the same. Let's add a nameplate, select can one and select nameplate to add a nameplate. And from here, select the first type, define length and width for the bracket, define the projection and location. Add an as me nameplate, define the dimensions, and click simply now. The wheel plate for lug one and lug two will be updated, and the nameplate will be created. Okay, now let's add some, uh, uh, let's add a stiffening ring for uh, can two. Define the height, select ring blade, and define the height, thickness, and the location. Let's add a nozzle for the bonnet. Let's add E1 and select the size. It's three inches, carry 160. Define the location and a wheel plate with 15 millimeters uh, and uh, width and uh, 18 millimeters thickness. Define the name of this nozzle or the service of this nozzle. After that, we will add a flange, select rating, size, and schedule. After that, we will come back to the nozzle and add the nozzle load. Define the forces, moments, click done, and from the calculator, we will define the projection from the center line to the facing of the flange, define the fillet uh, dimensions, and you can check that the loads and nozzle information is correct. Now, we let's add another nozzle, T2, and from here, we will make it looks like uh, T1, sorry. Let's see, define the name of this one, defined the size four inches, define the schedule, wheel plate width and thickness, define the location and the orientation 190 degree. So for the flange, we will change the size and schedule. Okay. Define the uh, nozzle loop to change it for, for the four inches uh, nozzle. Define the projection. Now let's uh, define the building details for uh, nozzle uh, T2, and you can figure that the loads and the nozzle information are changed. Now let's create the assembly to start creating the nozzles. The stiffening ring. Now, after creating those elements, we will add some other nozzles. We will add N1 to CAN2. After that, select the size. Schedule will define the name of this nozzle, the service of this nozzle. Find the location and let's add a flange for this nozzle, N1 flange. Select type, schedule, ratings and size like save from here let's define the nozzle load for the two inches uh, nozzle forces and moments and define the projection from the center line to the facing of the flange and 
let's define the orientation to be 190 degree let's add another nozzles n2 to k3 select the size 3 inches schedule 160 degree uh, 160 let's add a repad define the surface of the nozzle click save let's add a flange defined the type rating size and schedule so that we will come back to the nozzle and edit the nozzle load click done and from the calculator let's add the projection from the center line and from here we will define the welding sample click save let's add another nozzle in three select the same uh, options which is select the type of the nozzle select size schedule defines the service of the nozzle define the location and uh, after that we will add a flange to this nozzle okay after that we will modify the projection and from c12 we will modify the building information let's add another nozzle n4 and let's make it looks like n3 and let's add a flange n4 flange and we will make it looks like n3 flange and select n4 again to modify the location and click save now let's add n5 and this nozzle will include an elbow let's select the size as a one inch schedule to be xx strong Define the service of the nozzle as a level indicator one. Save. After that, we will add an elbow. So N5 elbow. Let's add this element. Select 90 degree long radius. And the orientation. Let's define the projection from the center line to the center of the elbow. Define the welding sample. And from here, let's add a pipe. So N5 pipe. Select the size as a pipe schedule and define the length let's add a flange so n5 flange from here select size schedule rating okay so let's create those elements Now, after finishing the nozzles, let's let's complete the other nozzles. Let's add N6 and it, let's make it looks like N5. Let's add another elbow, N6 elbow. Make it looks like N5 elbow. Let's add another pipe to N6. So that make it looks like the same pipe of N5. Let's add another flange and make it looks like N5 flange. We will change the location and orientation of N6 and the service. And for the elbow, we will change the orientation. Let's add another nozzle, N7. Okay, by the same way, we will complete the other uh, nozzles. So in this uh, video, we will make the 3D model as we discussed on the beginning of this video. And for the second video uh, or the second part, we will create uh, items uh, which is uh, which they are not included on uh, SEG library. Uh, for example, uh, like the uh, Bethel uh, support, uh, we have 
an internal uh, support for uh, the battle. Uh, like uh, earthing bows, uh, we will create it and add it to the model. And we will know in, uh, for, in the second part uh, how to uh, create those items and how we can add it to this easy bill of material to make it appear on the final uh, drawing. The third part uh, will include the uh, generation of drawings. Uh, how we can generate the general arrangement drawing, the uh, sub-assembly uh, drawings, uh, detailed drawings for saddles, baffles, uh, tube sheet, all of that we will uh, know how to create it uh, on the third uh, part. Now that's uh, nozzle end 10. Define the service of this nozzle. And let's add the last nozzle, which is N11. Make sure we will make it look like N5. Add an elbow to this nozzle. And we can make uh, a nozzle looks like a nozzle if we have some attachments to this nozzle by using the group uh, option. Uh, the group option gives you the ability to make a copy for uh, a lot of elements in one time uh, and uh, there are a reference uh, drawing uh, reference videos for this and uh, you can uh, check uh, the uh, group options uh, now let's create the 3d model for nozzles Now all nozzles shall be created. Okay, now we have the uh, final model. Let's add uh, some. Uh, let's add a stud bolt. For, to connect the flange N1 and F, uh, F1 and F2. Okay, from here, let's select uh, ISO not type, define the size to be uh, 336 uh, uh, millimeters, define the uh, spacing between knots and the length of the uh, stud bolt. Now we have the stud bolt. Now let's make some modifications for the tube sheet and baffle. Let's open the tube sheet and you can figure that because it's a tube, uh, it's a bended tube, we have uh, holes on one side only, so we will make a mirror for uh, the tube pattern. Okay, click save. The same thing we will do it with the baffle, so we will open the baffles simply and open the baffle part to make a mirror for the tube holding. Now we will uh, make the cut for the uh, sliding bars. So let's make a sketch here. This uh, part will be uh, done uh, manually, which is making a cut for the uh, sliding bar on the baffle. Okay, let's open the baffle and modify the sketch. Convert it to construction line and let's add a rectangle. Make those lines are parallel. Define this offset. Let's add another rectangle and we will make the same dimensions by using the equal constraint. Now we will make extrude cut. For those through all and in the two sides, let's make a chamfer at the ends right here and click OK. Now we have the final model of the uh, kettle time.